never mind. And that's okay, because I borrowed that one. Yeah, fetch the back, yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to have to process the topic of And one observation that's been fairly consistent is that when you talk to executives that have actually been through a breach before, they get it. It's pretty easy to sell them. Um, I'm just curious if any of you on the stage have been through a breach, how to go through that, or if you've leveraged other executives that have been through that pain to have them talk to other leaders within the organization and share what that, that experience is. <coughs> That. And I, I, I've been hacked, I've been beat down, I've been dragged out, and we've been in, in parks in New York City trying to understand exactly how it happened and ended in the cash. Um, so yeah, uh, and that goes back a long time over a long career. In the military side, you obviously had issues of, you know, how was it breached, how did I die? You have those conversations, right? But, um, mission impact. Yeah, yeah, mission impact's pretty important, right? So it, it's also been down to the conversation of, I think when you have people in your organization that are in leadership roles, that have experience in different contexts, and have, and have separate languages and different frameworks and abilities to cross pond and talk to different departments, that's that's very valuable to the organization. I think organizations that don't have those breadth uh, or individuals that have those sort of experiences are at, um, they're almost a liability, right? Because they don't have the same breadth or knowledge base that they do. So when a, when a situation arises, whether it be a compliance problem, whether it be a breach issue, whether it be a customer uh, concern, they just don't have the ability to pull those resources. Because again, nobody in this room knows everything, right? We're all part of this community we want to learn, and hopefully we all can get together and say, so how'd you do that? And, and, and collaborate with somebody. Huh. I'm going to frame it differently. Um, the sales guy or, or lady who lost the sale because of something security related, that emotional impact to them is just as jarring as a breach. Big B, small B, you know, doesn't matter. The, the issue is, uh, again, depending on who you're selling it to and what the personal impact is to them, you don't need a breach to make your case. The issue is you've got to understand what they're trying to achieve and figuring out what you're doing is going to help them achieve what they need at the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, whatever that is within your client culture. Sometimes we, we hang on what I call the Twin Tower Syndrome, where you know all the planning is for naught until the planes hit, and then all of a sudden there's all the action. The problem is there's a lot of emotion that goes along with that. Um, it's good to have your plans, but quite frankly, think about it. The, the sales rep who just lost commission on a X point whatever million dollar engagement, um, are they really thinking breach? Is that emotionally what's going to make them think about it? Or is it the thought of, you know, if we had done these things, you probably wouldn't have lost that engagement. I'm going to make sure that I do my best to contribute to you getting that next bonus check. Who's your next client? Let's figure out what we can do now. And you, you can go ahead, John. Yeah, no, just just real quick to that point. You know, we're looking to make a competitive difference. So essentially, we intend to basically put an assessment grade to say, hey, here to the point Ed made earlier. These are all the things we are doing uh, to make sure the security is top of mind, so that the product we sell you, it, it'll give you a certain level of assurance. And you know, I can essentially almost guarantee you that I don't see our competitors out there doing that. Yeah. And then that, that's our approach. So I think that, 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 go ahead, yeah, just real quickly, the, you don't need a breach to get the word out. Who simulated breach? I mean, that's the difference between an assessment and a penetration test. We can, we can come up with an assessment which is like, theoretically, you're vulnerable to all this stuff. And you, you know, you kept asking before, right? Well, you know, we, we haven't, it hasn't happened to us, right. but if I show them in a, in a I'm not gonna say dumbed down, no, I if I show them in a presentation, that's in the business language, how I just hacked into the goodies and there's all this patient information and show it clearly. If I show them, hey, if I could do it, and I have a full-time job, how about a hacker whose full-time job is to hack in? Don't you think they can do it? So to add to that, so for uh, we could return on this for any organization to create a red team scenario, right? We have a red team and blue team scenario where that you get the people within your organization, both physicians, people, technical folks, and you kind of create two groups of folks, where you have one group, then basically break them in half, have them think about the problem differently. And according to the modeling piece, the assessment piece of your own staff is very, very common. 
the individual is involved in the business unit side, that you say, hmm, well, what would be the worst case scenario in the business side? What would be the worst case for the technical side? Well, that's the same scenario that the attacker is using, right? Whether it be a competitive intelligence discussion, whether it be an uh, organization that wants to do harm, et cetera. Um, at the end of the day, the, the people within your organization, you don't need third party. I mean, it's good to have a third party opinion. But you can take this model internally and say, okay, guys, so what are we trying to do? Let's get some whiteboard markers out and let's try to figure this out. You'll be surprised how much progress you can make and have your people actually gel together and work together. They kind of see uh, an assembly of a problem and they can sort of identify some of these weak points. And you bring a, a third party to help out, point out things that they may have missed or either they didn't discuss. I'll, I'll wrap up by saying one other thing that we've seen, uh, particularly one CSO, was his ability to take stories and characterize them and make it relevant to the organization and say, look, yeah, this, these guys are in the lending business, but this happened and this is what's relevant to us and you know, we need to start thinking in this area. He, and he did it infrequently. So it wasn't Chicken Little, it wasn't Sky is Falling, it wasn't Dr. No, it wasn't you know, uh, Fear and Certainty Doubt. It was like, this happened, this is relevant. Characterizing the risk, and I think that's the real key thing is how do you quantify the risk? They're the business decision makers. It's our role to quantify that unknown, which is the risk. And with that, I'll wrap up our panel discussion. I want to thank Ed, Richard, John, and Tom for being great panelists. And uh, grab them, say, let's have a big hand, a round of applause for our panelists.